What's up you guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra. If you're new and sitting in front of me, I have all of my seeds for my garden for 2022. I'm very excited. I don't think I've been this excited to film a video in a very long time just because it took so long to get all of the seeds. But finally everything's sitting in front of me. All of the potential of what the garden could be in a couple of very short weeks, honestly. So we're gonna go ahead and hop in. I did get seeds from a variety of different places. I placed a small order on MI Gardener. Those took a very long time to come in, so if you've been thinking about ordering from them, I would definitely suggest doing that. I ordered my seeds on the 9th, and I didn't end up receiving them until the 26th, I believe, so it took a long time to get to me. I also went into Menards and I bought a ton of stuff from Menards and then I went into Walmart and picked up a couple seeds off from them too. I will link the MI Gardener website down below. Not sponsored, nothing, but they did send this in with my seeds. It just has a coupon code for everybody. It's not my code, but it says use code SHARE10 for 10% off of your order of seeds. Also, MI Gardener does send free seeds how many packets depending on the amount of your order so i ordered 18 dollars worth plus i used that coupon code they have it right on their website so i paid just shy of 16 dollars and i got one free seed packet so that's really fun and i was really excited to see what kind of free seed packet i was going to get so since we're talking about mi gardener i guess let's go ahead and start because i have never ordered seeds online before i didn't want to place a huge order with any one specific company my original plan was to order a small amount of seeds from a couple different online companies including johnny's seeds um, rareseeds.com baker's creek and just kind of test the seeds and figure out what I liked best, what worked best for my area, all those things. But when I went to go order things online, a lot of things were sold out. So I ended up doing what I've done in years past, just buying seeds from Walmart and Menards. I guess it worked out for the best because now I get to see seeds that I have been growing over the last couple of years versus things off of the internet, like off of MI Gardener. And I get to see the quality difference between the two. And I get to literally watch them growing side by side and seeing which one works best so there's that all of the seeds from mi gardener are two dollars the first thing i got was just some sugar pie pumpkins very excited about these i love pumpkins they're my favorite thing to grow so i'm excited about these the next thing i ordered is just a really basic jana lantern pumpkin just super basic but i ordered these we're gonna see how these go and there's some more fun seeds i guess i did go ahead and get an atlantic giant pumpkin there are about 15 seeds in this packet so i'm definitely going to try to seed save these for next year these are basically like your giant fair pumpkins and i'm excited to grow them i'm excited to see my kids get excited about the giant pumpkin growing in the yard i'm excited to see how my chickens react to the pumpkin all of those things so I had to do it. I just had to do it. I did get two different types of heirloom tomatoes. A ton of people had talked to me about how the tomato seeds from MI Gardener are really good. I had done a ton of research on them and that's what people recommended. So I did decide to get varieties that I couldn't just get at Menards or at Walmart or something like that. So I opted to go with this pineapple tomato. It's an intermediate tomato. It said that this one is an MI Gardener favorite. A ton of people like them these tomatoes uh get up to two pounds each and of course it's a really beautiful tomato it's described as a sweet and sour taste like a tomato but it has a pineapple and citrus tones it's a late season tomato i've heard from people that this type of tomato just produces and produces and produces right at the end of the season basically until the frost kills it which is actually great i was trying to plan a little bit ahead this year and make sure that i had tomatoes that were early variety mid-term variety or that were going to kind of produce middle of garden season and then i wanted some that were going to produce at the end that way i didn't have just all my tomatoes done all at once and i couldn't possibly get them all canned or all preserved all at once i wanted things to be like a slow progression all the way through is it going to work out that beautifully probably not but I did get a late season tomato to hopefully make my life a little bit easier on myself this year. I also got this chocolate striped tomato. This is one that I could not, could not buy. It sounded so good. It says tomatoes come in variety of colors. 
therefore can lead to determinate ripeness throughout the season. As tomatoes ripen, their colors become shiny, the weight of the fruit begins to increase, and the firmness starts to give way. It's said that these were a really good sandwich tomato or a salad tomato, which is something that I'm definitely looking for and I'm really excited to give these a try just because they look so delicious. I did get two packs of just regular old basil, just Italian large beef leaf basil. I had looked other places and they were sold out, so I got two packs, but just basic basil. I did get a dehydrator, so I'm hoping that this year I can grow a lot of my own herbs, dehydrate a lot of my own herbs, so that's something I'm looking forward to trying this year. The last seeds I actually ordered from MI Gardener were actually just cauliflower. These were the snowball cauliflowers. There are 300 seeds in here, which was really nice. Snowball cauliflower, I grew this variety last year and it did amazing. It says that this variety gets up to three pounds. That's about the heads of cauliflower I was getting last year in the garden. So I'm hoping these do really well. I'm hoping to preserve a lot of my own cauliflower because there's no canning involved. It's just picking, blanching, freezing. It's super simple. You can get it all done in just a matter of like 15 minutes from the time you're in the garden to the time it's in the freezer. It's so simple. So I'm excited about these. And that moves into the free seed packet that I got. I was really excited and I ended up getting a Space Master Cucumber. It's a 60 day maturity. I'm really excited about this. Um, it says that it's great for pickling and just straight eating, which I'm really excited about because I didn't buy a lot of cucumbers for the garden this year, so it's like they knew what I needed and they sent it to me. So I'm excited to give these a try, and if they're great, maybe I'll go ahead and order them next year. So that was my very small MI Gardener haul. I suppose we'll just move into the couple of seeds I picked up from Walmart because it's also very tiny and I ended up getting the bulk of my stuff from Menards. So Walmart got me with their pumpkins. What happened was I went into Walmart really late at night and they were just rolling out their seeds. They were just ripping off the plastic. Nobody had seen them yet. They were just rolling them out. And I was basically the first person to get a peek of all the seeds. And I love pumpkins. If I had my way, I would definitely be running a pumpkin patch. So uh, the pumpkins got me. It's like my weakness. So I ended up picking up this ornamental mix of gourds that I thought was really pretty. I've actually grown these once before. They did pretty decent for my area. I like packets like this because you get a ton of different things in here. You don't know exactly what you're gonna get until you open the package. And these also store so well. I could just throw these on a shelf and we could eat these months and months from now if I really wanted to. But to be honest, most of these are just gonna be used for decor. But I love these. I'm very excited to grow these this year and pass them out to friends and family just as decor pieces or to decorate with. And also I could potentially eat some of these, which is also exciting. This is a, another packet that I've gotten before. It's a pumpkin mini harvest blend. Like I said, I really like those packs that have a bunch of different things in them because you're getting a ton of different things and you're only paying for one seed packet. But I love these. I tried growing these last year and my chickens ended up breaking into the garden and they picked these clean and I did not successfully grow one pumpkin last year because my chickens came through and ate all my seeds. So we're gonna give these a go again this year and hopefully the chickens don't get in them this year. I did also end up picking up these Baby Boo white pumpkins and now looking at the other seed packets I got, I have white small pumpkins in both of these seed packets. I did not need these. So now that I've come down from the seed buying high, I guess I think I'm not going to plant these this year. I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna gift these seeds to somebody else, like my brother-in-law, my mother-in-law, something like that. And they'll grow these because in reality, I don't need to plant any more little white pumpkins. Um, I might also just save these and grow these next year or something, but I bought them, so I'm gonna talk about them. Heading into my Menards seed haul, this is where I got a bulk of my items. So I figured let's start with the things that I bought in bulk or a little bit of a value pack, I guess. So I did buy two packs of just regular string beans. These are the type that I've gotten every single year. They've always done amazing. They don't get tough as long as you pick them when you're supposed to. They always do really well in my area and I'm excited to grow these again this year. I need to grow way more than I have previously. I'm hoping to be able to grow at least like 80% of my own vegetables this year to feed my family for an entire year, which means we need two of these bad boys. We eat so many green beans. We use them in so many different casseroles and dishes and sides and soups and stews and all the things. I'm also hoping to get some pickled dilly beans going this year. So I got two really big packets and 
I'm gonna be picking green beans every single day if things go my way this year. <laughs> the next thing I bought in bulk, I thought there was no way I was going to find in my small town Wisconsin Menards, but they had it and they were sold out online. I was super bummed about it because I didn't think I was gonna be able to get them in time, but I found them at Menards. They have these little rainbow carrot packs. I'm so excited about them. I need to go ahead and get these out in the garden, like right now, basically. I'm also trying to determine if I go back and get another packet of these and try to grow these over winter this coming year. I'm still kind of making up my mind, but I did get rainbow carrots. I'm very excited about it. I'm really excited to see my kids' reactions to the fact when they're pulling up carrots and realizing that some of them are purple, some of them are white, some of them are yellow. I think it's gonna be super fun. I also think that it'll be really fun to cook with all winter long, to be able to have purple, purple carrots and different things in soups, stews, casseroles, whatever it is. I think it's gonna be really fun, so I'm so excited about that. We'll talk about peppers next. I did go ahead and get this hot pepper salsa blend. It has all sorts of different things in here, types of peppers. The plan with the hot peppers is to make a couple jars of hot salsa and then also to make some hot sauce with it and hopefully be able to give out some hot salsa, some hot sauce, different things like that as Christmas gifts. I also got just a regular sweet pepper mix, just some red and green peppers. It's a California Wonder blend. I've grown these before, they do really well and I'm excited to give them a go again. I also went ahead and got some Sun Bright peppers. This is another one I've done for years. It works really well and hopefully I'll be able to can up a ton of these, freeze a ton of these this year. Another thing that I was surprised that I found in my small town Menards was tomatillos. This is something I was super bummed because they were also sold out on these online. I've been watching Becky from An Acre Homestead talk about these tomatillos and how amazing they are, how much she loves making salsa verde with them and different salsas. And I told myself, I am going to grow tomatillos this year. I'm gonna give it a go and see how it goes. So when I found out they were sold out, I was super, super bummed out about it. These take 100 days, which means I need to get these going pronto. But I'm super excited to try to make some salsa verde with them. I'm excited about these also because no one in my family grows tomatillos. Everybody in my family grows a garden and it's always exciting when someone tries something new because if these go awesome i can hand them out to other members of my family that maybe the following garden season they'll grow some different things like that so i'm excited to give these a go and just try something new moving into tomatoes i got a ton of tomatoes because i've never grown a full year's worth of tomato products for my family we love tomato products, whether it be pasta sauce, pizza sauce, whole tomatoes, tomato juice, all those things I'm really hoping to be able to do myself this coming year. So I don't know how many seeds, how many starts I'm really gonna need to produce a year's worth of tomatoes for my family. So I bought a lot and I still don't feel like I have enough, but I did get two packets of these early treat hybrids. These are ready to harvest in 49 days, which is crazy. I'm really hoping they do well in my area. This is another thing that I'm hoping to have tomatoes that are early season tomatoes, late season tomatoes, all of those things. That way I can slowly be doing different canning of tomato products all throughout the entire garden canning season. I'm not doing it all at once and not feeling super overwhelmed by all of the tomatoes that I have. So. This is something that I'm hoping these do well and I can get a couple batches of tomato products on the shelf, ready to go, already preserved before the intense canning season really starts. That way I feel a little bit less overwhelmed and I can start checking things off of my canning list earlier in the season than what I'm used to. So I got two packs of these and I'm really counting on them to do well. I also got two packs of beef steaks. These are tied and true. These do have a tendency to crack in my area. Uh, the temperature fluctuates so much here. We can get frost really late into the season, which is pretty typical. These are really good at resisting disease and different things like that. So even if they crack, usually they're pretty decent tomatoes. I'm cut off the blemishes, can still get them canned. And these make amazing canned tomatoes. 
like whole tomatoes, diced tomatoes. These are what I like to use for those. They're a really hearty tomato, so I love them for soups and stews and even spaghetti sauces. I also got two packets of just steak sandwich tomatoes for burgers, sandwiches, all of the things. We go through so many tomatoes and it would be nice to have a couple of plants that are specifically more for fresh eating and that's what these ones are going to be. I'll definitely be canning these up too. I also got two packs of the delicious tomatoes. These are a really thick, hearty tomato. This is another one I love for canning. All those diced products, whole tomatoes, all the things are also not as watery of a tomato in my experience. So they make really thick salsa, which is what I prefer. So two packets of these two. I did get one packet of aroma style tomato. My mother-in-law swears on having aroma tomatoes in the garden for salsas and things because they gave a little bit of a different texture than a beef steak and all those big round hearty tomatoes, which is definitely true, but I really only need one pack if I'm just throwing these in a couple at a time in a big batch of spaghetti sauce or things like that to just help with the texture and different things like that. So I just got one of these and hopefully this will carry me through garden season. I did get two different kinds of honeycomb tomato or a cherry tomato. One is a honeycomb hybrid, which are these orange ones that are so good. I love these. And then also the honey delight hybrid, which are yellow. My kids love picking these. They're a little bit sweeter. They're not as acidic as a red tomato. I love throwing these in egg scrambles, salads, pasta salad. We make a big pasta salad once a week in our house in the summertime, just a really big batch and we'll eat it all week. We'll use it as sides for grilling and even just straight for itself by lunches. So we go through so many cherry tomatoes and in my experience, my cherry tomato plants usually just produce and produce and produce and produce until the frost kills them out or they get riddled with disease, which is something I haven't personally had in my garden, but it definitely happens. So. I love cherry tomatoes. My kids will also, while I'm out in the garden, you will find them needling their way over into the tomatoes, picking a couple of the cherry tomatoes, putting some like in their shirt or in their pockets, and then they'll run around the yard for a while, snack on the tomatoes. So cherry tomatoes don't last long in this house and we need to make sure that we have a lot. I also got two packets of pickle bush cucumbers for pickling and relish. I've only ever made pickle spears before when I was making my own pickles and I've learned that this year I really need to do slices for sandwiches and burgers and things. I'm also hoping to make maybe one or two jars of pickle relish because especially when we make our own tartar sauce and things we like to use our pickle relish. So that's the plan with those. I'm hoping to get a ton because my kids love pickles. We usually go through right around 60 quarts of pickles a year. So hopefully that'll be enough. But if not, my mother-in-law is putting in a really big garden this year as well. She always goes too heavy on the pickles. So if nothing else, as long as I go down there and pick my pickles myself, my mother-in-law is more than happy to let me go down there and pick pickles for her and take what I want home to preserve. I also got two packets of broccoli. I did broccoli and cauliflower last year and last garden season was a really rough garden season for us. Our weather was really unpredictable and one of the few things that really took off last year was my broccoli. It's the first year I had ever grown broccoli and I was super successful with it. So this year I'm hoping to grow enough broccoli for my family to eat an entire year's worth. We go through about five pounds of broccoli a month so it's quite a bit of broccoli I'm hoping to grow this year. But this is another one that's super easy to preserve. It's just a chop, a blanch, a freeze. So. I'm hoping that that's something I can do this year is at least grow a full year's worth of cauliflower and broccoli for my family. If I can do that, I'll feel really successful. This one lone zucchini packet. I shredded my own zucchini last year that we grew in the garden. I froze it and it's held up beautifully. It's been amazing to be able to just pull out fresh shredded zucchini, make a couple loaves of zucchini bread, whether it be for desserts or even a savory and it's just been great. I've loved having it and I want to do it again. So a little bit of zucchini. I also got one iceberg lettuce packet. I've never grown lettuce before. So just one packet. We're going to see how it goes. I'll probably have a couple plants just to see what happens. I'm also going to take my romaine heart ends and start putting those in water, getting the roots 
kind of growing out of those things and I'm just gonna replant them out in the garden I'm not gonna buy romaine heart seeds or anything like that I'm just gonna cheat and do it that way to get a thing of celery I have learned I really do like canning celery just in little increments at a time just as a flavor component for our soups and our stews that's literally the only thing we use celery for is basically as a base so that's what I'm gonna do this year. Hopefully it goes well. I've grown celery before. It's something that I really have to only grow every couple of years. And this is a year I need it. I don't have any left on my shelf. So hopefully I'll be able to grow enough celery to last my family probably three years or four years just because we don't use it as often. You're probably asking yourself why I'm trying to grow loofahs. Well, these take 120 days to harvest so this is another one I gotta get going ASAP, but I have this vision of being able to make my own soap infused loofahs and hand them out as Christmas presents for the women in my family, even maybe some of the men in my family. That's a goal I have to be able to give more handmade gifts. So this is something that I thought I'm gonna give it a try this year and see how it goes. I have a ton of herbs here that I'm gonna be talking about here in a second. I've got some lavender and some chamomile, and I even bought a thing of Spearmint, and I thought it'd be really nice to grow my own herbs, make these loofahs, and possibly make my own soap with some of my herbs, and case them in these loofahs that I grew, and give them out as gifts. So that's my plan with the loofahs, and hopefully it goes really well. I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to growing loofahs or drying them out or what the process is at all. So we're gonna do this together and see what happens. I did get a watermelon packet. This is a crimson sweet watermelon. I've never once been successful in growing watermelon in my garden. And this is going to be the year I've done a ton of research on watermelon, trying to get it to work. Hopefully this year it'll work. These are actually the watermelon seeds I used last year. I bought them from a local Amish shop. These are um, sangria watermelons. They grow 20 to 30 pounds. They're supposed to be a really great watermelon. And I bought them local. I've heard from other people, my in-laws, my brother-in-law, they've grown these watermelon seeds fine in their garden. I, for whatever reason, they don't work for me here. We are getting a soil sample done this year to hopefully figure that out and just to be better. If we're gonna take this seriously, we should probably get a soil sample done. So we're gonna do that and maybe that'll tell me why my watermelon doesn't work here. But I got some packets and we're gonna give it another go. The last thing I have in front of me are just a ton of herbs. So I already talked about the spearmint. I did get two packets of spearmint. I also got one pack of lavender. And then the other thing I got was one pack of chamomile. The chamomile and the lavender are really just to help bring in the bees, help get things pollinated in the garden. I've really been reluctant on planting flowers in the garden because I feel like I'm taking up space for flowers that could just be food but I'm realizing it's really important to get the flowers in there, to get the bees, to get the pollination, to get all the other things producing the way they need to and growing the way they need to. So I figured I'd meet myself halfway and even though I'm planting lavender, I'm planting chamomile, I'm still gonna be harvesting those and using them for different things. Hopefully be able to make some soaps and some loofahs and things like that. So that's what the spearmint's for, that's what the, all of this these fun herbs are for is hopefully to be able to make my own soaps. Everything else are herbs that we use, we need. I did get one more packet of sweet basil. I want to see the difference between this basil packet and the basil that I got from MI Gardener. I want to grow them side by side and just see what one I like better, which one grows better, what's the difference. Basically like a quality control test. That's what is going to be happening with the basil. I got one pack of cilantro. We don't usually use cilantro, but I've seen a ton of people use it in either their salsa recipes or their salsa verdes. So I figured if I'm gonna need it, I might as well just pick up a packet and grow it and see how it goes. If nothing else, if we decide that we hate the cilantro, I'm sure that I'll be able to dry it out in the dehydrator and give it away as a Christmas gift or something to somebody who would really love it. I did not realize I bought four packets of oregano. Not gonna plant all four packets, but I'll have some for next year, I guess, or maybe this is another thing. I'll give away a couple oregano packets to family who decide that they want them. We do use a lot of oregano. I'm sure this is something I could dry out and use a ton throughout the year, so. We'll see what happens. I did get two packets of chives. This is something we use pretty much in our day-to-day -day cooking. I'm really excited about it. This is another thing that'll help bring in bees, just help pollinate things. I also got two packets of dill for all of the pickling I plan on doing this year. 
Last year I ran into a huge dilemma where I had all my pickles ready, everything was ready to go, my beans were ready. Went to the store to buy dill and they were sold out solid for months. I went to local farmers, they were like on back order. Couldn't get dill anywhere and I'm not doing that again this year so I'm gonna grow my own dill, see how it goes and I'll probably freeze these. This is another thing that I'll be able to use all winter. We also started making this ranch popcorn with fresh dill and a ton of butter. It's delicious. We also use dill when we cook with salmon sometimes. So the dill will definitely be used. There will never be enough dill. But that is all of the packets, all the seed packets I bought for my summer garden of 2022. We are gonna start seed starts here probably in the next couple of days, some of these things that take a little bit longer to get going. Whatever doesn't make it with my seeds, you always have seeds that for whatever reason don't start. The starts die maybe as you transplant them out to the garden. Whatever doesn't survive, whatever doesn't take, I will just go to my local Amish store and supplement them with their starts. I might go ahead and realize because we are putting in a whole brand new garden out there where taking about a fourth of an acre off of our property and making it a garden. If I decide that I have a lot more room than I originally thought, I'll go and buy more starts from the Amish. Maybe I'll go in and buy watermelon starts or I'll buy cantaloupe starts, things that I don't already have, and put them in the garden to fill the space. But for right now, these are all the seeds I bought for 2022. Let me know down below what you're putting in your garden this year, if you're doing a garden, all of those things. Make sure you subscribe because we are going to be bringing you guys out into the garden a lot more this year, showing you guys a lot more of self-sustainability, all of those things that I've kind of been working towards over the last couple of years and I'm just excited to share those with you guys heading into garden season. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Thank you guys for taking just a small time out of your day to hang out with me. It might have been a little bit more than a small time today because I can tell that this video was very long. <laughs> so thanks for hanging in there with me if you made it to the end and I will see you guys in the video. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay I move on each and every day